Hi guys, it is a fairly nice day, fairly nice winter day here in the flood ravaged wasteland of South Austin, Texas. We have made it to Saturday, December 28th, 2013, uh, coming into the end of the year and one of these many year-end stories is uh, what can we call uh, this this man uh, well there's all these stories about all, all of the great people that this planet has lost in the year 2013 and there's a name that came across my radar that uh, how I found out about this was a circuitous route but this is a man who died actually back in July. I was doing a six week news blackout. So I was completely unaware of who on this planet had died. So this news has gone completely underneath Ham on Little Tail radar. And I am talking about the, uh, the passing of my fellow Texan, my fellow Texan, George P. Mitchell. George P. Mitchell. Uh, the inventor, I don't know if he's the guy who actually invented fracking. There's probably somebody out there who is going to call me on some little I dotting and T crossing, but he is certainly widely considered to be the father of fracking. Uh, who, uh, he has certainly uh, done as much as anybody to potentially change the course of human history in the uh, 20th and 21st century as anybody and even though I'm about however many months late about five months late in this news I just want to uh, say hats off to uh, George P. Mitchell and so anyone who wants to learn a little bit about George P. Mitchell because I admit I didn't know much about the guy uh, he was just one more Texas planet eater doing what he could. And so uh, this is going to be one of my where I go completely off the subject for a few minutes and then get back to it. So this all started uh, a couple of nights ago when somehow the Club of Rome came up. I've had many rants about the Club of Rome and I'm going to veer off in, into one now. Uh, for any of you who are not familiar with the Club of Rome, so you might be familiar with them if, if you're a follower of Alex Jones. Uh, Alex Jones continuously holding up the Club of of Rome as the poster children of the New World Order, the the ones, the, the most, some of the biggest evil mongers on the planet, the architects of the New World Order depopulation agenda uh, that he's always talking about. And uh, so, what does, once again, I'm going to read what Wikipedia has to say about the Club of Rome, uh, a little bit about Alex Jones, and then we're going to come back and draw the dots between the Club of Rome and, uh, and George P. Mitchell. Uh, but you can't talk about George P. Mitchell without talking about well, what he was one of the board members of the Club of Rome. The the for all intents and purposes, the inventor of fracking was one of the, the guys who pulled the strings at the Club of Rome. That is the dot connecting. So let's try to figure out from this what would the, why would the father of fracking be part of this operation? 
I mean, I honestly don't know. I'm asking this question. I am trying to figure out this myself. Alex Jones and I, I guess, are, are both trying to figure the, <laughs> this out, but probably from different angles. And then uh, we will come back to George. But let's look at one of, one of George's many groups, the Club of Rome. The Club of Rome is a global think tank that deals with a variety of international political issues. Uh, it's founded in 1968. It describes itself as, quote, a group of world citizens sharing a common concern for the future of humanity. There you go. So George P. Mitchell, this billionaire, one of the 500 richest people uh, on this planet, I've heard anywhere from 1.6 billion to two billion dollars that he had when he died, is he's a world citizen concerned for the future of humanity. So the Club of Rome consists of current and former heads of state, UN, bureaucrats, high-level politicians and government officials, diplomats, scientists, economists, and business leaders from around the globe. I guess George P. Mitchell would be one of the business leaders on their board of directors. It raised considerable public attention in 1972 with its report, The Limits to Growth. And, and I found out in digging in more to the history of George P. Mitchell, George P. Mitchell, the, the, the father of fracking, we will call him, way back in the 1970s while he was figuring out uh, this technology, he was one of the major funders to one of the greatest books about uh, what's going on on this planet ever written, The Limits to, to Growth. Okay, the Club of Rome states that its mission is, quote, to act as a global catalyst for change through the identification and analysis of the crucial problems facing humanity and the communication of such problems to the most important public and private decision makers as well as to the general public. And I have certainly been doing my part here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, my tiny little part uh, to bring the Club of Rome's message, particularly the limits to growth's message about what is going on on this planet. And, and I want to personally thank the father of fracking, George P. Mitchell, who I'll tell you a little bit more about when I get through talking about uh, the Club of Rome. Okay. According to its website, <clears throat> the Club of Rome is composed of, quote, scientists, economists, businessmen, international high civil servants, heads of state and former heads of state from all five continents who are convinced that the future of humankind is not determined once and for all and that each human being can contribute to the improvement of our societies. And, and I can't think of anyone uh, better than George P. Mitchell to, uh, to bring on board, onto, literally to bring onto their board of directors, I guess up until the day he died. Uh, than that. Uh, so anyway, as long as I'm here, I, I've, I've done this rant before, but, but bear with me if you've heard it before, and then we're going to move over to the uh, Wikipedia story on George P. Mitchell himself. Now, 
Whenever Alex Jones uh, is, is talking about the Club of Rome being the, uh, the, the one of the major architects of the New World Order's depopulation agenda to kill somewhere between 80 and 90 percent of the, sometimes he says 80, sometimes he says 90, uh, of course, he holds up the limits to growth, but the other one, the other uh, <clears throat> Club of Rome publication that Alex Jones and those Kool-Aid drink, Kool drinkers are really waving around in your face is a 1991 publication from the Club of Rome called the First global revolution, the first global revolution. Now, I don't know how much George P. Mitchell played into this. Okay, maybe he sat out this one, but my guess is he was involved in this, in this smoking gun that, uh, that Alex Jones likes to wave around. Okay, the first global re revolution from 1991 analyzes the problems of humanity, calling these collectively, or in essence, the problematique. It notes, laments, that historically social or political unity has commonly been motivated by enemies in common that uh, that this is what motivates us to to band together is uh, is enemies that are whatever the enemies of our tribe are like if we were living in caves it would be the saber-toothed tiger uh, out out there and uh, so what the Club of Rome was doing way back in 1991 was, was looking for enemies that are, uh, that are, well, endangering the very life of the global, the one world order of global citizens. And uh, so they were, uh, trying to identify enemies of the globe. And so, he, here we go, is the smoking gun that, that Alex Jones will wave in your face. <clears throat> quote, from the first global revolution. Here is the quote, and, uh, and then I will uh, have something, several things to say about it. Quote, in searching for a common enemy against whom we, meaning the entire globe, can unite, we came up with the idea that pollution, the threat of global warming, water shortages, famine, and the like would fit the bill in their totality and their interactions, these phenomena do constitute a common threat which must be confronted by everyone together, meaning everyone on the globe. All of these dangers are caused by human intervention in natural processes and it is only through changed attitudes and behavior that they can be overcome. The real enemy, then, is humanity itself. There you go. What more do you need uh, than that? Now, I, I, I did notice when you go on to Alex's main rant from about five years ago, uh, as he always does, not only do, does he take things grossly out of context, but he, he just misreads the word. So when he was reading verbatim the same sentence I just read, he says, in searching for a common enemy against we you unite, we came up with the idea that population, 
he missed the word pollution. So he says, we came up with the idea that population, not the word pollution. I honestly don't know if it was an honest mistake or not. So what he is, so what he is claiming then, of course, is this whole notion of came up with. So uh, Alex would uh, say they they invented that they invented population and global warming as enemies. They, they I wish they had they had. Uh, come up with the population. It, it, did they invent it or did they identify it? They did not, not only did they not come up with population as the nun, it was pollution, not population, Alex. Uh, it, they should have come up with population because that is the number one threat facing this planet. Nowhere in there do they talk about population. But anyway, I just uh, wanted to uh, comment on that about how Alex Jones cannot read the word pollution without, without screwing it up. And one more thing here, this is from a 2008, uh, I, I guess one of their studies by somebody named Graham Turner, looking back uh, towards whether the 1972 limits to growth uh, was coming true or not. So in 2008, this was, uh, I like this sentence, 30 years of historical data, although, anyway, close enough, to 30 years of historical data compare favorably with key features of a business as usual scenario called the standard run scenario from the uh, from uh, the limits to growth if if we keep on uh, this in 1972 the prediction uh, that if we keep on with business as usual the standard run scenario would result in the collapse of the global system midway through the 21st century. So as of 2008, according to their study, it seems like everything is going, uh, go humming right along uh, to a, a breakdown of the global system midway through the 21st century. I, I have no problem with this, and, and I cannot think of a better example of the business as usual scenario or the standard run scenario uh, a hell of a lot more alive and well in 2008 than 1972 than fracking. If you had to pick the most diabolical, nefarious, planet-eating example, the most unsustainable, uh, planet-eating mockery uh, of all of the warnings uh, in, in the limits to growth and this 2008 uh, study, it would be fracking. And so uh, why was I not surprised to find that none other than George P. Mitchell is uh, you know, on the board of directors. Okay, now moving over. Let's see what Wikipedia says about George P. Mitchell, and we will close with the eulogy to George P. Mitchell from Forbes magazine. Wikipedia. George Fidias Mitchell was an American businessman real estate developer and philanthropist from Texas credited with pioneering the economic extraction of shale gas. According to The Economist, quote, few business people have done as much to change the world 
as George Mitchell. Uh, <laughs> th th this is one of these rare instances when Hambone Littletail agrees 100% with The Economist. You cannot argue with that fact that uh, in, in the world will wait and see just uh, how true that statement is. Uh, of course, The Economist and Forbes have uh, a more benign view of fracking than anybody with a brain. But anyway, what I particularly uh, liked was the Wikipedia section on uh, George P. Mitchell's philanthropy. This, this planet-saving philanthropist from Texas. What was the father of fracking? Where would someone who came up with perhaps the single most unsustainable, uh, environmentally destructive uh, practice uh, of fracking, where do you think this man uh, gave his money? It, it, not counting the, the money he gave to the Club of Rome. Uh, okay, his wife, Cynthia Woods Mitchell, and uh, George P. Mitchell, and the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation have distributed or pledged more than $400 million, $400 million in grants to causes, programs, and institutions. The vast majority of this amount is related to science, environmental sustainability, and sustainability science-related fields including the foundation's current grant-making programs which focus on sustainability science, clean energy, water, and natural gas sustainability. There you go. He is joining, uh, in 2010, he joined the Giving Pledge sponsored by his buddies Warren Buffett and uh, Bill and Melinda Gates. So all these billionaires saving the planet. Uh, so according to the National Academies of Science in the 1970s, Mitchell helped sponsor the work of Dennis Meadows, whose Club of Rome study, The Limits to Growth, was a global wake-up call on the pressing need for sustainable energy technologies and food sources worldwide. Okay. So, uh, working with Meadows and other national leaders, Mitchell created the Woodlands Conference Series uh, and the International George and Cynthia Mitchell Prize, both dedicated to sustainable development. He was particularly interested in the role of the business community in creating sustainable societies, and he himself is, quote, a model of linking entrepreneurial success to the sustainable movement. Let's see, what else did this guy do? He underwrote the National Academies, Our Common Journey, A Transition Towards Sustainability, that defined the role of science and technology in moving toward sustainability. Okay, and then as a follow-up to that, he donated $20 million to the George and Cynthia Mitchell Endowment for Sustainability Science at the National Academy of Science. 
committed to advancing science and technology in support of sustainable development. This goes on. Uh, let's see. He donated $25 million to the Endowment for Regional Sustainability Society science to support work in sustainability science and finally Mitchell donated part of his wealth to the Cynthia and George Mitchell Foundation which supports programs for the efficient and wise use of Earth's resources. And let's see, in 2004, Forbes magazine estimated his net worth at $1.6 billion. I've heard the figures of $2 billion uh, that he got from fracking, placing him among the 500 richest people in the world. And I love this at the bottom. George Mitchell was also not just the father of fracking, the uh, Mr. Sustainability was also the father of 10 children. Okay, and I, and I can't leave my eulogy to George without looking in at Forbes Magazine eulogy. George P. Mitchell, A Visionary Life. So where uh, Mr. Mitchell will be, will forever be remembered as the father of shale and for good reason. There you go. So it all talks about how he manifested uh, his vision. One thing they, uh, they talk about is, is, uh, is, is this is this planned community this brand new city right here in East Texas in the big thicket of East Texas which I believe the United Nations has actually called one of the seven most biodiverse spots on planet Earth uh, the Mr. Sustainability went in there and bought 27,000 acres of the big thicket and turned it into an, an entirely new city. Uh, I think there's about 100,000 people living there. I think the goal is to move 130,000 people into this former uh, slice of the big thicket. Okay, uh, so I, I just enjoyed this. Uh, uh, I, I just enjoyed this paragraph out of the eulogy to George P. Mitchell. Mitchell's consistent, extraordinary vision manifested itself in many other areas of his life, meaning outside of fracking, where others only saw a near impenetrable pine tree forest otherwise known as the environmentally sensitive big thicket. Mr. Mitchell saw a master planned community with conference centers, office buildings, hotels, shopping centers, schools, and high-end golf courses where I'm sure he played golf with his billionaire fracking buddies. In 1974, he dedicated the, this, these 27,000 acres of land that would become the woodlands today home to 100,000 people and the headquarters of Anadarko Petroleum. 
the area is so inviting as a place to live and do business that Exxon Mobil is currently constructing a campus complex just to the south that will house more than 10,000 of its own employees. It, 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 it was so inviting uh, that Exxon Mobil is now moving in to the big thickets. And then uh, they talk about some of the $400 million I just uh, talked to. Jump and so moving to the bottom of Forbes Magazine eulogy to the end of this rant. Through his legion of philanthropic efforts, Mr. Mitchell has donated hundreds of millions of dollars in efforts to help the less fortunate and create a more sustainable planet. There you go. Mr. Mitchell was truly an extraordinary man who possessed extraordinary vision and generosity of spirit. A loving father who was devoted to and cherished by his family. His family statement concludes with, quote, there is no doubt that he helped make the world a better place, close quote. No doubt about that at all. And in so many ways, George P. Mitchell rest in peace. George P. Mitchell, may you roast in hell, you evil bastard. And we will see how much fracking uh, has to do with uh, bringing the population of this planet down uh, by 80 to 90 percent where it needs to be. And, and yes, it, it, it is the New World Order's business as usual scenario that is going to bring down the population of this planet by 80 to 90 percent uh, over the next hundred years thanks to George P. Mitchell. Uh, yes, he is one of the architects of the New World Order depopulation agenda, uh, not for the reasons Alex Jones would claim. Uh, the only question is, thanks to people like this evil son of a bitch and, and about half the other members of the Club of Rome's board of directors, the question in a hundred years from now will not be uh, whether the planet's population has been reduced by 80 or 90 percent, but whether it has been reduced by 100 percent. And uh, that will bring, uh, come to the end of my eulogy to George P. Mitchell. May you roast in hell. Bye, guys. <laughs>